Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Good morning, wherever you are in the world. This is Patrick Brown, Executive Director here at the Renewal Center. Thank you for coming to Renewal Live, our artist spotlight. We have been celebrating Art Awareness and Art Appreciation this month. And part of our vision for the Renewal Center is to be the prophetic center for thought, voice, art, and action. As part of our mission in reforming culture, we're having discussions around reforming culture through artistry. So if you're out there today, first of all, what I want you to do is go ahead and like the page. We're streaming here on Facebook Live here on the Renewal Center site, as well as on the It's Patrick Brown YouTube page. So I want you to go ahead and share it. Tag your friends. Hashtag Art of Mark Thomas. Hashtag Art of Mark Thomas, because that's who we have today. An artist, a painter, a visionary, a creative. We're going to have a discussion today. So those of you that are out there that have said, you know, I'm an artist, I'm aspiring to reform culture using my art, using my talents, using my capacities. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this conversation. Go ahead and join our conversation today. We're reforming culture. Mark is an incredible artist, an incredible painter. So go ahead and hashtag the art of Mark Thomas. Please go ahead, please share this with your friends. Send an inbox to them. Let them know that we're Renewal Live is here. If you're catching the replay, make sure you hashtag replay and go to the Art of Mark Thomas page. So I am so excited about this because last week we had a conversation about reforming culture with our guests. Today we have another guest. Mark is located in Columbus, Ohio. He is a painter. He is an artist. He is a creative. He is a thought leader in the area of impacting people, caring for them, and help. And he has a journey. He has a story. And I'm so looking forward to our conversation today. So if you're out there, get ready. Let me know that you're here. Make sure that you're commenting in the comments. Let us know in the chat what your thoughts are about our dialogue today. So I want to welcome Mark Thomas to Renewal Live. Mark, how are you doing there, brother? I am good, man. I am honored to be here with the Renewal Center. This is such an honor to just be able to talk about art. Um, always good to see you again. I'm excited. And just to, you know, just to share my story. Yes. This is exciting for me as well. I, I admire you. I admire you for who you are and your focus on being authentically you. That's why I appreciate about what you bring into the earth, but also specifically what you do with the art that has been given to you. And so I just want to thank you and welcome you. What's on your heart today? What's what's how's your summer been so far? Oh uh, man, summer's been been awesome. Wife and I, we just built a house. We moved in, so congratulations. You know, we've been uh, getting everything ready. We've been at the at home store at least twelve times already. So. <laughs> at, at, at home is on point. <laughs> yes, yes, at home, just be able to come at home. Just uh, you know, just it's a blessing. You know, the yes. whole process just to be sitting in a wonderful, beautiful new home, and just every day it, it sinks in further and further. Yes. Yes. And, you know, I, I'm grateful that you have taken the time to spend time with me, to spend time with here, us here at the Renewal Center. Uh, we're out of Concord, Charlotte, North Carolina area. And I tell you, you know, I just want the audience to know how grateful I am for the talent, the gifting that you are. And so I want to, first of all, the, the piece that I have behind me is an original piece that was created by Mark F. One. This is a piece that's here in my office. This actually sits in my home. And I want to talk a little bit about the journey of that piece a little bit later. But one of the reasons why we're having this conversation is about reforming culture through artistry. And so tell us a little bit about your journey as an artist, as a painter. It, it is a journey, to say the least. Um, my journey began through pain. Mm -hmm. I am a survivor of child abuse. Okay. And so the arts was the first place where I could hide. Mm -hmm. And, you know, over the years, I've had those different points of life, which were teachers just for some reason had that moment with me that kind of helped transform onto the next stage. So I was broken inside, but the arts allowed me to kind of just be able to hide behind that. And what that allowed me to do was to experience some short-term, you know, affirmations. 
like, oh man, he's, he's he, he can draw real good. Oh, can mm. you draw me this? Can you draw me that? I would say, yeah, because those affirmations felt good. Yeah. And I remember the day, and I was in second grade, and we had to uh, draw the United States flag on Manila paper. Mm. Everybody was going around the class holding it up. They got to mine, and everybody laughed. Wow. So I was crushed. Mm. So in that moment, the teacher stopped everything. She said, you know, don't laugh. You know, it's not funny. Um, mm. Everybody's at a different place. And so literally from that day on, that's kind of like where my art, artistic endeavors began to kind of release. Mm. And it got, you know, more so better and better. But I was still hiding behind it. Mm. I was hiding behind it from literally from age nine to about age, you know, 25. Wow. Wow. And so I was able to hide behind art, art with an S, because it wasn't just arts. You know, it was dancing, it was, you know, the art, it was the acting, all those different things. Ah, the break dancing. Be, yeah, I was hiding behind all that. Mm -hmm. I was still broken. Yeah. That was my escape during school time. But then I would go back to, you know, the the the, the trauma back inside the household. Okay. And wow. so over the years, I think that was my that was my my C time per se. All right, mm -hmm. stay here. Keep doing the art. I, I know it's hard for you right now, but it's it's, it's going to come to pass. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, as I got older and began to kind of teach some of the arts, that's when God was like, "Now I'm going to allow you to use these arts to try to you know to kind of help heal others." Wow. Unbeknownst to me, I was like, "I just want to paint. I just want to teach these folks, you know, how to dance." But the testimony had nothing to do with the dance. Mm. I feel confident now. I, I feel better about myself. I got my family involved. I went out to this function and I didn't have to, you know, have four drinks in me to get up and be able to move, be able to move about. Mm -hmm. like, wow. mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So by God allowing that art to be able to heal others, it was actually helping, you know, heal me as well. I was like, wow, okay. So I went through all that to be in this position to kind of help others heal at the same time I'm healing mm -hmm. and so um and then you know years down the line I began to you know teach more and began to kind of get into my art and kind of develop trying to find my own little niche mm -hmm. and other points of life like I remember my high school teacher uh very influential in my life Miss Widenbush from uh, Fort Hayes she's on my bio that's how influential she was that's awesome the first day I went to class I was like yeah I did this I did this phenomenal painting. She looked at it. She's like, hey, that's nice. We need to get you in a painting and drawing class. We need to get you in a composition class. Foundational stuff. Because mm -hmm. at that point, I was just a raw talent. And mm -hmm. for me, raw talent is missing a lot of, raw talent to me is, you know, they're missing a lot of the foundational stuff. Ah, okay. And so I had to, I had a choice. Either listen to the crowd or listen to somebody that's actually knows what they're talking about. Okay, Interesting so that you mentioned about raw talent and you talked mm -hmm. about foundation. I want to hone in on that a little bit as far as raw talent and the foundation part. Can you elaborate, maybe unpack that for us? So uh, raw talent, you know, you get this talent, man, but it's kind of like it's unscripted. It's, it's, it's kind of it's not caged per se. Mm. So somebody with a trained eye can recognize the talent, but also they realize there's a rawness with that as well. So they're like, okay, well, let me let me pull this person to the side. They're good, but let me pull them to the side and get them to work on these things. Because mm -hmm. that's what is going to stick out no, no, no matter how far along they get into the into the artistic uh, you know, careers. And so now, even to this day, she'll comment like, hey, that was good composition on that painting you did. Or, you know, my other uh, influential, Ben Crumpler, he's like, for me to say, hey man, you know, I'm an artist who looks just like you. I made it and I want to help you up. Mm. Same thing. Foundation. He'll comment now, like, man, that was some great color contrast on that painting mm. you did. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, wow, okay. So now, because they planted those seeds in me, I'm able to plant those in other, you know, artists, or even like younger ones that are just now getting into art. You know, foundation is key to everything. So what happens when that raw talent gets that foundation? Oh, man, it, it, it takes off because no matter what they do, it's always going to be there. 
Mm -hmm. Like I could be out someplace. I could be looking at a picture. I could be like, ooh, the balance is off in this painting. Or even, you know, I could be at a restaurant looking at a fly. Ooh, man, they needed to they needed to proposition this better. Those things kind of like, you know, kick up. And a lot of the stuff that I learned early on, I still do to this day. I'll mm. draw a picture, I'll draw two, I'll draw two lines, one vertical, one horizontal. And I will make uh, I would draw everything within those squares. It's called a little grid technique. That's like mm. art 101. And okay. I still use that to this day. Wow. Because when you, when you have a strong foundation, man, it's easy to kind of build on. Okay. So that's one of those foundational pieces that you learn. Yes, this is a probably a, an interesting question, but do you doodle? All the time. Yeah? All the time. What happens when you doodle? I'm curious. <laughs> I mean, I, it, it can be random places. Sometimes I might be in church and I might start doodling. My wife will look down like, you done drew four paintings on that little paper. Like, oh, my bad, my bad. The creativity <laughs> never stops. So yeah. I'm always doodling. I'm always sketching. And she knows that if she sees a sketch laying around, don't throw it away. Uh, I have like a little bag, a little box. I just throw it in there because... You know, something to always use it for, uh, like that scene in, you know, Five Heartbeats. He's going through the drawers. He got nah. one layer here. He yeah, got another that. layer and a pair of socks. <laughs> another one because all those things come back. Mm -hmm. It may not be that right time. That just may be the seed. Like I right, draw the seed right now. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a drummer. Okay, mm. I'm probably doing it right now. Then all of a sudden, three years down the line, oh man, I want to do a drummer piece. Bam, it's right there. Mm. That's but powerful. Also, yeah, but also. The doodles allow you to see how far you've come, how far you have strength. I still have sketchbooks from high school. Wow. And so, so doodling doodle shows you how far you've come. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So there are times when people doodle and don't even know that you're really focusing on building a foundation. What happens in that? Is it like you're developing consistency, discipline? Well, so artists operate in the gray area. That's, okay. that's, that's the only area we know how to operate in. Mm -hmm. Organization, not so much. But our our gray area makes sense to us. Mm -hmm. So you may come in my art room, I may have paint on the floor, I may have a couple of flyers here, uh, you know, a tipped over thing here, but it's organized to me. I know where everything at is a, as an artist. Mm -hmm. Others looking in may be like, okay, well, what, what is this? But that's that's all a part of the process. And that's why a lot of times if you look at artists, paintings or self portraits of their workspace, it's never really like extremely clean. It's exactly mm. how most artists would envision that place being because it's mm. all a part of the process. It's like, wow, man, all this junk per se helped create this beautiful masterpiece. Hmm. All this so-called junk. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's powerful. That's really helping me think through, you know, that's why I asked about doodling, because I doodle. I doodle in a different way. Right. I doodle when I'm writing. I yeah. doodle when it comes to developing a lyric. Even in developing a sermon, I'll, I'll doodle a little bit. Yep. You know, and, and as I do that, I'm seeing evolution, you know, yep. take place in that. I want to go back to how you talked about art and pain and the hiding piece. What would you say to artists or to people in general, how art can reform? Man, I am an advocate for the arts period. I know a lot of times in schools, that the first thing that gets taken away is mm -hmm. the expressive arts. Whether it's the art program, the theater program, the acting program, it's usually the first thing on the chopping block. Hmm. So what that mm -hmm. does is, man, it kind of eliminates some sort of outlet because not everybody is a talker some people can talk through their pain through art through singing through dancing whatever and it's a good uh bridge because eventually they'll be able to talk but oh man what did what did this piece mean well this meant x y and z when i was going through this one but art man transforms lives literally on the on a daily basis art is all around us Mm -hmm. And I think people need to see now they're starting to see the healing, the healing power of it. Because if I can get you to scribble on some paper to calm down versus just, you know, going off on somebody or going out mm. there committing a crime, 
if you're doing that every day, you're like, man, I ain't got time for that. I need to sit here. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Does that make sense to nobody else? But it's going to make sense to me. I just need to be able to kind of calm down and just to be able to, you know, to do this. There's like, you know, when you see a mural sometimes, it's driving on a vacation, like, wow, man, that's really powerful. Mm-hmm. I like that quote. You may mm-hmm. even get out. In yeah. that moment, you've been transformed. Now, whether how long that stays into your into your mind or not, it's just depending on, you know, the individual. But man, I, I get to see it, I get to experience it, you know, each and every day. Even like when I gave you the painting, you were sharing with me the impact of it. Yeah. Because for somebody that might be like, oh man, that's just paint. That's just the hat. That's just the figure with some words on it. But it meant so much to you. It changed. It changed. Yes. Me. And so a lot of expressive people, we operate in that expressive state. So mm-hmm. where I may get a whole lot out of, you know, hearing the hearing the praise team or, you know, seeing seeing the dancers and you know, the pastor may have some clips of a movie that deal with the sermon for creatives. We like that type of stuff. We're, we're locked in because we can concentrate on four different things at once as long as it's brought around full circle. Mm. And so that's that's what that, that, that change is. It's, it's an important, powerful tool. And even when those that are experiencing some change through art it's encour- It's always encouraging for them to be able to talk about it. Yeah. Because being able to talk verbally is another piece of the puzzle, especially as men. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, man, that, that piece moved me. Okay, well, why? Oh, you just did, dog, versus it moved me, man, because it took me back to a place, man, and I was able to kind of see full circle, and now I'm at a different place. Yeah. And I'm confident enough to be able to, you know, express that. And even in a positive wow. way, like man, yeah. that little picture right there, it took me back to the wedding day, you know, mm-hmm. like walking down the, the little the little thing. It's like it's like uh, visual doodles. Visual doodles. Mm. I like this conversation. This is so healing. <laughs> you know, you mentioned about you know the work that you created for me, that which is right here behind me, and this is in my front room in my home, my main room. And I remember reaching out to you last year. Um, I recently purchased a home. I had recently transitioned a year after that. I was coming out of divorce, going through my own restorative journey, my own pain, looking at my own self-evaluation, all these other, other emotions, both positive and negative. And to me, your work, was part of my, I like to call it multi-sensory affirmation. Like that. And so I remember reaching out to you and I was like, hey, can you create a piece? And I didn't have anything except for just, I knew I needed something to help me through my own journey that that would speak to me and, and it did. So I wanna talk a little bit about that because the impact of your work for me I see it every single day. Every day I see that same piece. Every day, matter of fact, I have a little plant that sits next to it and the plant connects with, and I'll show the picture here, it connects with the piece that's on that's on the easel. So when I reached out to you and I asked you to create this piece, um, what was your process, if any, and how you approached it? Because I know I didn't, I didn't say anything. I just said, you know, look, and it just happened. Can you tell a bit about that? So I call it a three points of reference process when I am uh, doing a piece that someone else will call me or inbox like, hey, can you create a piece? I'm like, okay, well, give me usually three pictures, um, three points of reference. So it may be a theme, right? Or it may be something more, you know, sentimental. And so what I do from that is I take those three points of reference. So for you, for example, you gave me a couple things, but then I was like, hmm, let me go through his page. Let me look at the pictures. Let me look at the ones where he is not quote unquote, uh, like like you being a model. Let me let me look at the other ones. Let me capture something, you know, from that. 
And when you add all those things together, then that process of creating begins to take place. Mm -hmm. And during the process, I always stay in contact with uh, the person that's interested in the art. Because my thing is, I want to get it right. So let, let me see your rough draft. And if I need to change anything, allow me to go ahead and, 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 and change those things. Mm -hmm. So I allow them into the process, even though I am, you know, creating. And then when I'm done, I do, I do the same thing. Like, hey, here's your final piece. What do you think? Let's talk about it. Um, you know, what do you think? Because I want them involved in the process. Because a lot mm -hmm. of people see art. But they're not they're never a part of that process. Mm. So um, hey, this is what the sketch looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember that. Well, this is how I kind of color it in and make you see the difference. This is yeah. what the, the second stage looks like. Yeah. So it, it's it, it's full circle. And it, it's mm -hmm. allowing you to be like, okay, wow, okay, now I understand the process of you know what what the artist does instead of here you go, here's your painting, bam. You know, because when I'm painting, I also put on music. So I, a lot of times I'll put on classical music, gospel music, depending on what it is that I am, you know, painting. If I'm doing a jazz piece, I'm putting on jazz music. But a lot of times, man, I, I lock in because music is the backdrop for, you know, a lot of it. If I'm yeah. doing my, you know, Strokes of Life stuff, it's always gospel. Hmm. Because what they're, you know, what they're telling me, I may be taking it like, wow, this is the great, you know, they have a phenomenal story. They're really... Um, you know, pushing through what they're going through. Yeah. And so that anointing gets involved into the painting. Mm -hmm. So when they get it, it's like it's like, wow. Okay, God. Yeah. Yeah. That's powerful. You know, I appreciate the work because for me, I, you know, you drew me had my fedora hat on, and, and you know, some of the words, you know, Renaissance, renewal, flow of life, and I, I look at it every day, and I'm like. You know, I remember it. I, I cried actually, man. It showed up. I, I remember the UPS came. I was like, oh my God, it's here. You know, I was like, oh wow. And I was so overwhelmed because you didn't know that, but it was ministering healing to me. And it was multi sensory, multi dimensional affirmation about where I was, where I am now, and then where I was going. And that's what your work did. And so I'm so appreciative that. That you created that work for me and 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 i thank you for also sharing about music you know one of the words about the word music itself the word muse means to think from its root whereas the word amuse means to not think so it's interesting how this is not amusement this is a muse that is causing us to reflect causing us to think, and, and you tied that to your vision of strokes uh, for life art. And I definitely wanna talk a little bit about that. You referred to that a couple of times in our conversation. This particular strokes of, of life or of life art for me helped in my healing journey. So tell us a little bit about, as far as the whole reforming culture, what is strokes for life art? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I remember the exact day it came to, uh, you know, fruition. Um, I've always had a servant's heart, serving others, um, just doing something for those maybe that are are struggling with, you know, with something. I've, I, I did it, you know, through dance and then through art. I told my wife, I said, you know what, I just want to paint a picture for somebody that's just battling some sort of uh, mm. difficult diagnosis. Mm. And so the word strokes came up. So I called my mother-in-law and said, hey, we're coming up with a name for this. This is this is what I this is what I'm thinking of doing. I got strokes in life something. And she was like, strokes for life. I looked at the wife. I said, yes. So my wife was like, well, don't just do cancer. Do it for people that are all sorts of people that are battling some sort of difficult, you know, life diagnosis. Mm. And so um Wow. My first client, um, God bless her, Elisa, she, she just passed uh, recently, not too long ago. Um, mm. She was at the James Cancer Center. I mm. literally took my paint, I took my easel, and I sat there and I painted the whole time she was going through chemo. 
that she had, uh, she was suffering from breast cancer. So she, she was in there for about, I was like, how long are you here? About six hours. So I was in there for about a good, maybe three hours. She, she just sat there. She just, she just watched. And it was, it was, it was a magical moment because she got to see my process, but also I learned a lot about her process as well. Mm. So the healing she got from that, just to be able to, because it was a picture of her running. She was a runner. She said, I want to be crossing the finish line. And for that picture, that to be the first one. And then her last one, when, you know, when they closed the casket, she was at her finish line, her finish line to glory. Mm. And, you know, mm -hmm. that day it was like, okay, God. And so it began to kind of, you know, take off. I would reach out to families. They would reach out to me. And one of the things that I always do is, even though I know their stories, I don't tell their stories. That's not my job. Because uh, and with social media, people tell the stories without, you know, maybe the family doesn't want to know. And so, I mean, you think about it, anywhere from a drug overdose to to a, a murder victim to a matriarch or patriarch of the family passing away, yeah, the Dayton massacre that happened, um, the El Paso massacre, you know, that happened, just to be able to go into these households and for me to say, hey, I want to do this for you, you know, I want to bless your family. I heard what you know what happened, and to give them a gift, a a a real gift, not something that hey, I got a picture for you, but to see their reactions, it was just like, okay, God. And so literally, my thing is we all have gifts. Yeah. We all have to use that gift to glorify God. Yeah. And that folks of life is the epitome, you know, the epitome of that. And when I first started doing it, I would be so tired afterwards. And I didn't know why. So I talked to a couple people that were uh, nurses and doctors. It's like, yeah, because you're you're trying to take on all their pain, all their anguish, everything they're going through. And you're trying to, you put that onto a, a canvas, a piece of wood. And so afterwards, it, it, it drains because I want to get it right. I draw, my thing is, I paint about the person, not about their diagnosis. So mm. I have to say, hey, like Ugh. I said, send me three pictures. Tell me a little bit, tell me a little short story about, about the loved one. And I create from that, from that picture. And every picture has a tale. And so I think I want to capture them of how they how they were, not, you know, in their uh, you know, the most horrible state that they're in, their you know, laying in the bed. No, I want to capture them. And that that was the whole premise. Like, you know what? I know your loved one passed away. Mm -hmm. This is them. I remember there was a lady, her uh, her husband passed away, you know, by overdose. And I remember bringing a picture into the house. Her her son had to be like maybe like a, not even a year old, still in diapers, sat there on the ground. And he said, that's daddy. Mm. That's daddy. Oh, and for that moment, I was like, yes, God, yes, yes. And so, man, it's it's been just like, tr like tremendous. I mean, it's opened up doors, not just for me as an artist, but like for God to sew back into me. He's like, you know what? You're doing all this. Now let me open up doors for you because you are, you are doing all of this. And a lot of times I'm like, well, you know, well, how much? It's like, you know what? I just operate off of donations. I don't care if it's five dollars. I don't care if it's ten thousand dollars. It's just helping fund, you know, the next one. You know, and to see whole families come together. And I don't record either. You know, a lot of times today, side people want to record them doing nice, beautiful things. You know, there's no recording because it's such an intimate moment. And a lot of it's the chance for them to be able to talk because once the funeral is over with, once the crowd goes away. They're there to deal with that. Mm. So dropping off the painting, man. There was one guy. He literally just talked for three hours, and we just sat there and we just listened. He talked, he talked about his wife and how beautiful she was, and just just everything in life. Yeah, and those are the moments where we we get I get to listen mm -hmm. because they're finally be, they're finally kind of able to like to like talk, and it's it transformed just like into like a ministry. It's like wow. And I remember I started in September of 
Mm-hmm. And I recently just counted up all the ones that I've done, and it's like up to like 152. Wow. You know? And I don't get tired of doing them. There was one time I did like 12 in a row, and I just, you know, she's like, you coming in to sleep? Like, no, I'm, I'm, I want to finish these. I want to get these to the individuals. I drove them down to Dayton. It's like, hey, can you get these to the families of the individuals that have passed away? And like the lady, she just she just happened to be mm. herself a caregiver in the community, so she was able to get a lot of those out to the you know to the families, and just to for them to hit me back up and be like, man, it was such a blessing. It was just like, wow, thank you, God. This is like, you know, amazing. And one of my goals is to literally go down to St. Jude's, live on the campus maybe two weeks and hey you know what i just want to paint 16 individuals that's all i want to do i know where to get the supplies from don't worry about that this is what i want to do wow you know and i want to go to the james cancer center because my thing is um and some of them have actually helped me paint their own portraits like i set up shop at the coleman and mm-hmm. as the survivors came across the line i pulled them over and said hey i want you to help me paint this picture so mm-hmm. they have their own little, you know, strokes for life onto that. And man, I tell you, man, it's such a, you know, wow. it's, such a, it's, it's, it's extremely rewarding because, you know, when you sow something, it's going to come back. Yes. The harvest season. And to now where I'm teaching art therapy and where I only wanted to do the strokes for life. They were like, hey, why don't you teach art here? Yeah. Open up the door. All those expand. Yeah. Yeah, and the working at working at first step recovery is full circle because I was broken then. Now I'm healed now, and I'm able to use art therapy, artistic ways, into helping them in a the therapeutic way. Yes, and to see their eyes unload and unlock, and you know, yeah. I remember my first day I said, "Hey, I never did drugs personally, but I am a survivor of abuse, and I can relate to you guys on the abuse part." Mm-hmm. And we're using art as a metaphor. I don't care if you, if you can draw really, really good or if you can only draw stick figures. Mm. As long as you get the metaphor out of it. And to be, and my goal is just to unlock, to mm. unlock you know, creative ways, creative outlets that are going to replace some of the other bad behaviors that you that you were doing before. Mm. And, you know, to hear their stories when they leave, like, man, thank you so much, man. I, I never knew that art could be this way. And uh, you helped me out a lot. And, I'm going to continue this. You know, my kids are, are, they're wanting to get into art now. And I'm like, thank you, God. Wow. You're having generational impact. Yes. You are reforming hearts, minds. I know it's reformed mine because it was the first piece of art in my home through my broken places. And it was an, it speaks affirmation without any words, you know? And so, man, I, I want to thank you for the light that you shine. Thank you for the passion that you show. Thank you for your obedience, too, man. Because you you could have just stayed hidden, but you decided to, to, to show compassion as Christ shows compassion. And you minister through your art. And it just thank you what you what you're doing and, and how you're showing us the importance of reforming culture. And I mean, it's like you're you're going in and you're like a chaplain, <laughs> you know, going in and folks getting healed and set free and delivered and going through grief recovery all because of what God's placed in you, man. Thank yeah, you. I mean, it, it's amazing, man. I went into some hospitals and, you know, uh, probably about maybe about 10 in, I began to take my wife with me. I said, mm. you, you have to experience when they receive, you know, their blessing. Um, because looking at the picture is not the same thing. So, I, you know, I began to, you know, take her with me. And man, there was one, she took a picture and, you know, we're looking at the pictures later on and the picture had a glow on it. Mm. Said, mm-hmm. Did you type a flash on when you took this picture? She was like, no. And so in the photo, the guy, he lost his wife. His left hand is literally touching a memorial little heart on his mantle of his wife. And there's a glow 
in wow. the painting. And I said, wow. I mean, we've been in Children's Hospital. My wife was like, hey, you know what? It's all right if I pray. So the whole family, all of us together, don't really know each other from other than just- you know, Incredible. Just sitting there on one accord, just, you know, just praying together, you know? And it's just like, God, you doing this. Mm. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm I'm feeling it <laughs> as you're talking. I don't know about anybody else out there, but I'm just going to just listen to you talk. Yeah. You're, really, you're really helping us. You you really are because you're you're letting us know. And I want to thank you for your transparency. You're you're welcoming us into this world of creation, and it exists twenty four seven for you. You know, tell me a little bit about where this is going for you. So it's like different, different things. Cause you know, artists, we just can't just do one thing. We got to mm-hmm. do like multiple different things. Yep. And God has blessed me to be able to uh, have jobs where I'm using all of those talents. Mm-hmm. Nothing better than being able to go to work and loving what you, what you're doing, mm-hmm. loving Telling the other kind of like, man, guess what we did in the class today? Guess what such and such did when they, you know, when they showed off their artwork? But I mean, it's it's opened up doors. Like mm. when I say promotion in the pandemic, um, the artwork has you know taken off. There was there was a guy down in Virginia. He's an artist, and you know he kind of poured into me. He's like, all right, young man, grasshopper, I want you to work on some big pieces. I was like, all right. So a pandemic hit. I was like, well, we got a whole whole lot of time on our hands. So I created these four foot by four foot paintings. And literally our whole condo at the time looked like just, just like an art gallery. Mm. And so somebody uh saw my passion and they tagged somebody else who be who became a seed. And they actually came down from Chicago. They were art buyers. Mm. And they bought like, you know, three or four pieces. I was like, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. And they taught me a lot because they were literally art buyers. They were like, okay, can I get this authenticity letter with this artwork saying that this is the this is the original? I said, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Original. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, uh, I'm the artist. My wife was the banker. I was like, all right, I'm bad at negotiating. Most artists are. I'm like, okay, banker. Let's let's go to this right here. Yeah, for your wife. That's right. Hey. That's right. Hey, look, I raised my hand. I was like, look, I'm not good in negotiating. I'm not good at you know <laughs> pricing, which most artists aren't. Mm-hmm. And so having that, you know, that that voice, like, all right, come on, let's do this. And so it's just opened up so many doors. Um, and so this actually piece behind me, mm-hmm. um, I was going into my wife's uh office. Okay. And so Building a house actually introduced me to another form of art because you go into furniture stores, a lot of the artwork that's in there is all abstract with paint and different splashes and stuff like that. So I was like, yeah. okay, I could do that too. You know, it's already like, I can do that too. You don't need to buy that. Right. I go ahead and do that. <laughs> so I began to be a, be a student again. So I would take pictures of the art, like, hmm, okay, let me see where the foundation is in this. I could be at you know home goods just anywhere. Like okay, I like this. Let me go follow some artists that this is their genre. Let me kind of pick their pick their brains. And so you're all always a student. Just because you're a quote unquote professional artist, you never stop being a student. Okay. You never stop yeah. being kind of just broadening your horizons. And I call it my you know furniture art. But also what I learn, I take back to um, the uh, addiction recovery place. And I, mm-hmm. and I do it with them and they, they all do it together. So it's like, okay, each one teach one because all mm-hmm. of my mentors, they've done that. So, mm-hmm. you know, this, I'm doing the same thing. I even tell them where to go. I say, look, I'm an artist. I know where to go get stuff. Go to Five Below. These are the same supplies that I give. Mm-hmm. When they graduate on to sober living, I give them a bag of art supplies. Because my thing is, I'm not going to pour into you for 10 weeks and just send you out the door with nothing in your hand. Because I want you, I want to put something in your hand that you can continue to do. 
Because if you immediately begin to implement those things, even, you know, all right, I'm going to have our art class each day. That's eliminating a lot of that idle time mm. that a lot of addicts struggle. And so this is brand new stuff. Here you go. I want you to make sure you make sure you keep on using it. And then I give them their painting, their strokes for life painting. Okay. You know, obviously I can't post those with the right. recovery program, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, man, it's just opening, you know, so many doors, broadening the horizons. Mm -hmm. and now that I have my own art space down here in my new house, yeah, I can really get, I can really get back into it. Awesome. Congratulations on that too. No, thank you. Absol absolutely. Tell us, how do we remain students again? You said I began to be a student again. You, you perfected your craft. You're constantly growing. Tell us a little bit about as artists, as creatives, how do we begin to be a student again? So the analogy I'm about to use, I actually, I use the same analogies when the uh, individuals at the addiction program graduate on to another program. So imagine a water bottle, right? Mm -hmm. If you first buy it, it's completely full. You can't pour anything else into that. Mm. And so for me, I always keep 25% always open because okay. I never want to get to the point where I'm not receiving what somebody else is trying to pour into me. And so mm. by, by doing that, it, it always keeps me humble because I'm always nervous when I hand off any painting. Yeah. I want to make sure that I got it right. I'm like, yeah, they're going to like this. I'm the man. Nope. Mm -mm. I always, I've always been like that. Mm. And because I'm like, well, I got it. I'm ready. Okay. Well, you, you, you're full. I can't pour into you because it's, it's just going to wash away. Hmm. But if I know you're still hungry, like, okay. Okay. Uh, they're walking around. They got, they still got some, some more room. Let me pour into them. Let me pour into them with maybe this little artistic technique or this hanging style or, you know, this subject matter. And hmm. one thing with art, uh, it will expose you, but the exposure will always take you back to your foundation. Because okay. for the most part, I've always, I've always only painted pretty much brown folks. And so hmm. growing spiritually growing, you know, in all sorts of ways, I'm, I've had to be a student again. Like, okay, how do I color blonde eyes? What colors make up red hair? What colors make up brunette hair? What colors make up an olive color skin tone? So I became a student, staying a student again. Wow. Because depending on what you're doing, you have to be a student of that craft. I remember I did a, a drumline uh, piece. I was never in the band. So I called one of my good friends. She, Hampton, she was in the band. I said, hey, what three things, three points of reference again, signify an HBCU band? She gave me three points of reference and every piece it has those three points of reference. And anybody that's been in the band or sees that picture, they know that, okay, this is HBCU. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> so, you know, even if I'm doing, let's say I'm doing a picture for a pastor. I might be mm -hmm. like, okay, well, what does that cross mean when y'all put it in the pocket? Because I'm thinking about putting that in the painting. I want to know certain things that that I want to get it right. I don't just want to guess. Because my thing is, I want to get it right. I want to be authentic to what it is that, you know, that he or she may do. Yeah. And we have to be open and pliable, moldable, mm -hmm. wet cement Yes. in the hand of life. Mm -hmm. So that we never crystallize and just become stagnant. Yes, sir. That's, you're using some powerful images. You're, you're teaching us. And thank you for you're teaching us. You're inspiring us. You're healing us. You're helping us focus on what it is to be authentic. And that's one of the things that here at the Renewal Center, you know, one of the key areas is thought, voice and art and action. Mm -hmm. And we have a tenet in our values that says restoring lives and reforming culture where art comes in into that and you're helping us understand we, we talked about doodling we talked about the pain aspects of it so and also being able to be open to be point being poured into conversely what are some areas that might hinder growth in artists that you might see or that you want to just if you were mentoring someone and developing other emerging artists what are some areas they may need to watch out for 
that might stifle growth? Um, as an artist, I don't care what level you're on, a mentor is key. Mm -hmm. Social media is not a mentor. Mm. You can get a real deal mentor who can tell you like, yeah, you're good. However, you need to work on this. Because all of my mentors I've had in dance and fitness and art, they've all been cut and dry. And they'll usually give you like one thing to kind of work on that's going to take a while. Like, okay, I need you to work on, uh, you know, your, your structure, you know, on your faces. Like, all right. A couple months down the line. Like, all right, I did it. I got it. Okay, now I need you to work on X, Y, and Z. And so a true mentor, they kind of, they're not out in front. They're kind of like in the shadows a little bit. They'll comment when you're on, you know, some artwork. Like, hey, man, that was a great composition on that piece you did right there. Mm -hmm. You really improved in you know, these areas that, you know, uh, that I, that I poured into you and the social media is powerful, but also sometimes people only listen to that voice. Mm. So if you are a artist and the only thing you're always hearing is, this is great work. You got it. You're already there. That could be a catch 22 because somebody that knows art knows foundation they may tell you a little bit differently, man, you got some good work. However, I want you to work on X, Y, and Z. Mm. But I got 10,000 likes on this painting, so I'm good. I'm already there. Oh, and so wow. you kind of just, all you can do is just drop those seeds and hopefully they, you know, they begin to kind of water them. I remember there was a gentleman at the, he worked at the gym, young guy. He was drawing one day. I said, like, oh man, let me, let me see your stuff. It's like, okay. Said, That's good, man. That's good. He's like, he said, are you artists too? So order my stuff. I said, man, that's that's great. I said, I want you to work on a couple of things. It's your assignment this week. So when I come in next week, I want you to show me what it is that you did. Next week came in, he did the work. I was like, that's what's up. Yeah. Said, Somebody did that for me. And I want to do the same thing for others. Now, uh, I always tell parents who have kids that are into the arts, who have like that curious, young, raw talent. Get them a hard book sketchbook. Allow them to draw, paint, sketch, and keep those sketchbooks. Because a year from now, you can look back and be like, wow, you know, they really improved in this. Mm -hmm. Keep those. And before you go out to some of the more expensive art places, go to Dollar Trees, go to the Dollar Stores, go to Five Below. They have art stuff in there for like $5, little entry stuff. So if you're like, oh, I want to do some paint pouring, go there. Five dollars versus if you go to an expensive art store, you don't spend seventy bucks, and then and then they don't really like it. Mm. It's a good entryway. It's okay. A good segue, like okay, now they're really they're ready to kind of step up a little bit more, and allow them to uh, create. Because most artists, we all start out the same. We start tracing, we start doing the comic book characters, we start doing the graffiti, we start trying to draw faces. And then, you know, onto the hands and then some of the stuff that we do in, you know, in the regular art classes in school. So it's like a rites of passage. And usually you'd be like, OK, yeah, they have some they got some good talent. Uh, let me see some more of your work. But it just takes that individual to, to stop and kind of like pour into them. Mm. But allow them to be expressive. Please okay. do not kill the artistic side. Because that's an outlet. Yeah. Because that's that's another voice. You do not want to kill that voice. Mm -hmm. Because that can be extremely uh you know detrimental to the self-esteem, to maybe their, you know, their self-worth, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. Yeah. And is art easy? No. Because you may sell five paintings in one month and you might not sell nothing else for a whole nother year. Mm -hmm. So I mean it. It's the it's a beautiful journey, mm -hmm. and you know as long as they show interest. One thing I do wish though is if they had advanced placement art classes at every stop, if they had one in in uh, elementary school and mm -hmm. middle school, and obviously mm -hmm. you know uh, your senior your junior senior year. But what happens sometimes they have to wait to the junior senior year. For a teacher to tell them, like, hey, you're good at this, but you need help in these areas. Yeah. 
Whereas if you if they can if they have that availability to go to those classes earlier, um, then it could help shape them because when they do get out there, I want them to kind of focus on this is my this is my genre. This is this is what this is what influenced me. Mm -hmm. Because it took one project to spark uh, the painting that you have and my current style. We had a project in school. A parent, you can do this with your kids. Have them go through different art books. We're like, okay, oh, you like that? Oh, you like that Bob Ross? Now I want you to create a Bob Ross type of painting. Mm. Mine was the Harlem Renaissance era. Mm -hmm. Jacob Lawrence. If you look up Jacob Lawrence and you look at my work, you can kind of see the influence. Mm -hmm. Influence, not copy. Influence. Influence. Powerful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. So, you know, with, with the vivid colors, uh, even like sometimes, you know, the subject matter, whatever, but that's where my inspiration came from. And from then, I pretty much uh, operated in live and in color the whole time. Even, you know, to this day, I even tried one time, I'm going to just paint in black and white. That didn't last for two seconds. Like, <laughs> I got to do wow. it. I got to do what I do. That's incredible. You have shared so much. You've shared principles, you've shared insight, you've shared wisdom, you've poured out some nuggets for us to consider as artists, as people who everyone has art in them. Everyone has a form of expression and you've inspired us to do so. How does someone commission you? How do they reach out to you for to order your work or commission you for work? So if you're interested in seeing more of my work, whether it's on the Strokes for Life side, maybe you have somebody that you're thinking of that would benefit from receiving a painting. You can use the hashtag Strokes for Life Art. And all the ones that I've done will pop up because I always use that hashtag. And then also you can use the hashtag Art of Mark Thomas. Just about all of my artwork that I've done, um, it's on there and you can kind of be like, hey, you know what? I noticed you did uh, you know, HBCU band series. My son or my, or my father or my husband was in the band. Can you do one? Can you do one as well? And then they, you can inbox me or you can even kind of screenshot the photo that you're looking at. Like, hey, I'm interested in, you know, something like this. And the way that that process will work, you hit me up like, hey, I'm interested in a painting this size. How much would this cost? I can kind of give you ballpark, you know, figure. Hey, do you want it framed? Do you want it unframed? Um, and then I'll be like, okay, well, what is the subject matter? And so once we kind of make that uh, initial, like, hey, I'm dedicated in getting this piece, I'll do a, I'll do a rough sketch, rough draft sketch. Mm -hmm. like, hey, rough draft sketch. Let's go ahead and send over, you know, the down payment or, you know, you can pay in full. And then I'll be in touch with you step by step, you know, of the way. Yeah, that's what so, happened with me when I got my piece. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So for me, I'm like, I'm not the traditional artist because a lot of artists, you you can commission them on today, but you might not get your painting for like three months. Mm -hmm. Mine doesn't take that long. Okay. You know, because I operate, the way my style is, I've developed it over the years. It doesn't take, you know, two months, whatever. Because my thing is, I want you to, want you to feel, I want you to be a part of it. And then, you know, you get like, wow, this is, okay, this, this came out great. Yeah. And, to see the art in person is different versus kind of like looking in a picture because mm -hmm. you get two different things. You're, yes, it you're, is. You're your other sensory. Yeah. <laughs> well, you definitely have made us feel part of your art today. You've made us feel a part of your journey, um, your discovery, the development of who you are. I want to thank you for your, your transparency and your authenticity. And what you shared with us today, this has been great. You know, one of the key things that we're sharing here at the Renewal Center, our, our vision is to reveal Christ, to renew minds, restore lives and reform culture. And we're doing that through artistic conversations, creating content ourselves. We have our facility here. Um, that's a cafe. We, we offer tea. We have a thought room. We have an art and action room. We have even a, a room for a digital creation. Um, so we have a staff member, uh, my nephew, who was on here last week, as actually, mm -hmm. he's uh, graduating his degree um, this coming uh, December in art as well. So I definitely want to make sure you all connect. Yeah, um, That'll be great for him to receive some inspiration. And he's been on, matter of fact, viewing today. 
And so I, I think this whole cross pollination and constant synergy today has helped us. Any last words you want to share as it relates to reforming culture or anything you want to share with the audience or the viewing, the viewers uh, concerning art, reforming culture, creativity, anything like that? The arts can heal, the arts can restore, the arts can refresh. Uh, re, re, the arts is, you know, can be rejuvenating. The arts mm -hmm. is extremely connective tool. So, you know, if you're married or if you're dating or, you know, get your loved ones involved with you because that actually helps, you know, strengthen that bond, strengthen that bond as well. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to be, you don't have to be good at it. Mm -hmm. The fact that at the end of the day, be like, you know what? This was so much fun. Even though I only drew a stick figure that had a pair of Adidas on. But it was so much fun. <laughs> and keep those memories. Because art, you know, is it, it's a memory. You know, a lot of arts to, you know, really, really see. And also, on the flip side, ask an artist what's their story. Mm. You know, a lot of times, a lot of us have stories. A lot of people in the Absolutely. art, you don't have stories. You right. Know, take time, like, you know what? You have really have a passion for art. What's the story behind that? We all got a story. You know, and you'll be kind of be, be blown away because then when you're looking at the artwork, the body work, it can kind of bring it all full circle. So, Thank yeah. you so much, man. You have helped us today. You have told us your story, your journey. I want to thank you for being on the Renewal Center is Renewal Live today. Uh, it's a pleasure. I'm so glad that I have my piece. I want to encourage everyone, please hashtag the art of Mark Thomas and also the other hashtag. Let me bring it up here one more time just for those viewers that are out there who may not, may just be coming on. I'll remind you to please make sure that you just touch base and consider that. Um, also consider both. You have the commissioning pieces of the art of Mark Thomas and then also Strokes for Life art as well as organization and his vision. Mark, man, thank you so much for being on today, man. This has been a pleasure. I wanna thank you for connecting with us. Those of you that are out there viewing here at the Renewal Center, we are celebrating art awareness. So I just wanna bring this up just to remind you we're celebrating artists and the Renewal Center is reforming culture. We're doing it through celebrating artists. And so those of you if, you, if there's people we can interview, inbox us to let us know if you're an artist out there, just, you have creativity, you have innovation, you have a story, you have a message. We want to remind you, you know, to, to really look deep within you and recognize the creativity that you have. The innovation that you have is so important. So I want to thank Mark for being on here today. Um, folks, reach out to Mark, reach out to him. And, and connect with them. I wanna also remind those of you that are out there that connect with us here at the Renewal Center, if you'd like to continue supporting uh, these conversations of reforming culture, please feel free to download our mobile app. You can also donate to the Renewal Center as well. We are hosting conversations. You can donate through our website at www.therenewalcenters.com forward slash give. We also have a mobile app and you can download that in your store, your, your mobile store, and, and you can give through our mobile app. And then also you can text to give us, and I'll leave that on there too. You can text Renewal Center to 888-364-4483. Once again, make sure that you reach out to Mark Thomas, folks. Hashtag him. Mark, thank you for being on. You are a blessing. I'm glad you're in my life. Thank you that your work is in my home. It has done great healing, inspiring, and affirmation in my life. So again, thank you so much for being on today. Thanks everyone else that's out there. Please make sure that you share this video. Go back and watch it. Share it with your children. Share it with your family. Connect with those. And let's expand this message of reforming culture using our artistry. Again, thanks everyone. And remember, I am Renewal. We'll talk with you soon. Renewal. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Thank you so much.